Okay, good afternoon, everyone. It is uh, 5.05, April the 3rd, and it is time to start the Community Development Committee meeting. Roll call, please. Chairman Rivera. Present. Alderman Moisiel. Alderman Turner. Present. Alderman Florian. Present. Alderman Hayes. Present. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> may I have a, uh, a first and a second to approve the minutes of the March 6, 2023 regular meeting? I'll make the first. Okay, thank you, Alderman Turner. <clears throat> second. Thank you, Alderman Florian. <laughs> Um, do we need a roll call or? Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you. Um, okay, the next item is to approve the minutes of the March 20th, 2023 special meeting. So Great. moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great, thank you. Um, all right, at this time we are going to have a, um, a public hearing and um, the, uh, it's a public hearing for 2023 Community Development Block Grant, otherwise known as CDBG Action Plan. Uh, do I have to call this to order or? Yes, please call it to order. Okay, may I have a, a first? So moved. So move. Seconded. Second. Okay, and all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Anyone opposed? All right. Ms. Larissa. Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. You might want to speak a little closer. <clears throat> to the a little so closer. what? Speak a little closer. <laughs> oh, it's stuck. Okay. okay, but I have I I I can speak loudly. Great. Thank you. Okay. So I'm presenting um, tonight um, our program year 2023 annual action plan. Um, the city of Waukegan, Illinois, we are an entitlement community that receives federal funds from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development to support community and economic development and affordable housing activities. The city is a recipient of the CDBG grant as well as the Home Investment Partnership with HOME. Um, those, homes are those funds are received through the Lake County Consortium. In accordance with her regulation, the city has prepared its um, program year 2023 annual action plan for the period of May 1, 2023 through April 30th, 2024. This is the fourth year of the consolidated planning period. The consolidated plan is a strategic plan for the impl implementation of the city's federal programs to, su to support affordable housing, um, community development, and economic development activities for residents and business of the community. And doing this public hearing, this is a 30-day common period um, that requires formal action from the city council, um, and it has to be put out to the public for 30 days to make any comments, any questions, um, to examine it, whatever. They have 30 days to do that. So this is technically opening up the 30-day common period. I will be back before you, I believe it is. April 3rd for an approval so that we, I'm sorry, May 1st, I'm sorry, May 1st for an approval so that we can submit it to HUD the following day. So just to briefly go over the programs that we funded for this program year, we funded um, a safe place. An emergency is for their emergency shelter and corresponding DCFS co-location services. Mm -hmm. um, we gave them $5,000 towards that program. We also funded CASA Lake County for their legal advocacy for youth and care for $11,000. We did elder care of Lake County providing transportation for older adults in place. We gave them $9,000. Habitat for Humanity for their Family Services Program, we uh, funded them $9,000. Northern Illinois Food Bank uh, for their Senior Grocery Program, um, we funded them $7,500. Uh, 
Pads of Lake County for their Day Resource Center. We funded them $7,000. Prairie State Legal Services for Disability Advocacy Project, um, $12,500. Prairie State Legal Services for the Fair Housing Program, we gave them $10,000. Um, Youth Conservation Corps we, for their Youth Bill Program, we gave them $10,500. Youth Bill Lake County for their Youth Bill program, we gave them 10,500. For Zachariah Sexual Abuse Center, Sexual Assault Services for Children, we gave them $17,000. And those are our public services, which is capped at 15% of our total grant allocation. Um, I don't know if you guys know, we actually received a decrease of over $65,000 this year in our CDBG grant, so we're actually only receiving um, $726,683. So of that, the 15% is the um, 109 and $2, and $2 dollars. $109,002, I'm sorry. So for our public infrastructure and facilities application, for the Waukegan Park District, this is for the redoing of Beaver Park renovation. We gave them $75,000. Um, for the City of Waukegan sidewalk program, we funded it for $100,000. For the City of Waukegan lead service line removal program, we funded them for $100,000. Um, for the City of Waukegan beach accessibility program, we funded them for $50,000. So that would be $325,000 for our public infrastructure and facility programs. For our economic development programs, we funded Connect Waukegan Digi Digi I'm sorry, Digital Literacy Training Program for $50,000. Um, the City of Waukegan, um, but our program is the Micro Enterprise Small Business Loan Program for $300,000, of, of which is CARES Act funding. And then for our housing rehabilitation program, we funded that for $300,000. And then our planning and administration for our housing, for our regular admin, it's um, 1,400, I'm sorry, $145,336, which is 20% of the grant allocation amount. You can only allot for 20%. And then for the um, rehab admin portion, we did $291,400. So that's a total with everything, including the COVID funding that we're using, um, $1,520,700, I'm sorry, $1,520,738. That's our total cost of of funding that we have for our program year for 2023 annual action plan. Any questions? Any questions? Sure. Thanks. Um, Ms. Garland, I'm sorry, what was the, the entity that received uh, $300,000 related to housing? That, that would be us. Who was us? Well, CDBG. So for our housing rehab you, program. You, you, CDBG awarded CDBG 300000 No, CDBG receives the, the funding in order to do the housing rehab program. Okay, got it, thank you. Uh, so what kind of, just, just curious, what kind of controls do we have over that program? Do you monitor the contractors that are building or renovating? Or what, just give me a really brief. Yes. What your offices duties are relates to the housing control. rehab program uh, well with the housing rehab program that's available to our residents who income qualify yes, for a single family home owner occupied only yes. um, they come they would uh, apply for the application as long as they're approved we send out we send out bids we get the bids back we choose the lowest responsible bidder. Our rehab coordinators are responsible for going out along with the building department and the inspectors to go out throughout the process of the rehab to ensure that things are being done properly. Um, before we make a payment, the homeowner has to sign off as well as the inspector, the rehab coordinator, and myself before a payment is made. What are the, 
what are the parameters? What, 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 what's the qualifiers? You just have to income qualify. Which is, what's the, what's the high, the low? Uh, I don't, unfortunately, I don't have them in front of me, but, um, but it's based on your house, your, um, how many people are in the household, and yeah. you have to meet a certain income level. Okay. And if you meet that, you would qualify. Uh, your, how, your taxes have to be paid. Mm -hmm. Your mortgage has to be up to date. Mm -hmm. You have to have insurance on your property. It has to be a single family home. There cannot be any additional liens on the property, you know, with the exception of mortgage, mortgage of course. Right. And you would otherwise qualify for the program. Okay, cool. Thank you. And mm -hmm. then, um, you mentioned seventy five thousand dollars went to the park district. Yes. For Bevier Park. And I'm just curious why we give so much to another taxing body. So, you know, they, they raise taxes, they got money, got investments there, they do their own thing. They got millions. And I know that they have millions in uh, special funds, like somebody might uh, if they, they die, they can bequeath monies to the park district. So I know the park district's sitting on money. Why, why give them 75K? We could use that for like street re resurfacing or something here. Well, well, we have our stakeholders participation panel in which they make the determination for who's gonna be funded and the funding amount. And the park district, that they've been good partners with us and being able to do the different parks throughout the community and by them being a good partner they decided to give them $75,000. They actually wanted more. Yeah, I'm sure they did. Uh, but we only granted them $75,000. It's possible. So I know the city of Waukegan, we come to you and says, hey, we want X number dollars, $100,000 to do sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Could we also make that request for monies to do the street resurfacing? Mm-hmm. I don't like that guy. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. That's not a and that's not an application that they put that they put in for. Had they put in for it, so yeah. Okay. Any further questions? I have a question. Mm -hmm. You said that the funding was or the grant was reduced by maybe you said seventy five thousand dollars. What was the reason for the reduction? Do you know? We weren't given a reason. A lot of people received a reduction. Um, for example, Lake County, who's a part of our consortium, they also received a reduction as well. What I was told is that. HUD has a formula that they use, and each year they normally get more entitlement communities. So when you add more entitlement communities, they have to subtract it from somewhere. So that's one of the things that I was told, but it's really just a formula. And that's why it's also so important that people fill out their census information, because we get our money based on the number of people that we have in our community that qualify as low to moderate income. So that's why that's so important as well. Sure. But, but that's kind of like what we talked amongst ourselves of why this funding was reduced. Okay. It wasn't anything that we did wrong or anything like that. It was just reduced. Sure. Okay. Uh, could I ask one or two more? Okay. So uh, is the grant dependent upon the deployment of the funds? Like, do, we, do we have to evidence the fact that we deployed the funds to various uses in order for the next year when we go to apply and say, hey, we used all this money, this is what it went toward, give us more? Well, basically, so with the, like I said, it's a formula. So they're gonna give us what they're gonna give us when they go and, and decide what they're gonna give out to each entitlement community and that's what we get. Um, but yes, we need to show that we are spending our money properly. They want us to spend it down. Um, they actually do a test every March to determine if we spent enough money. Okay. Although, like for example, they did a test this year. However, we didn't get our money into November. And then they did a test in, in March. So, of course, we didn't have that much time to spend it down. And so hopefully this year we're able to get it because our program here technically starts May 1, but we normally never get our funding May 1. Okay. So we're kind of floating with other money. So that's why we have our CAPER each year that I'll be bringing before you in July for approval, and we detail what we spent for, for the program year. Okay. Uh, last question. I seem to remember last year at this time, um, when you were presenting that there was there was money available for some of the storefronts along Washington, the mm -hmm. facade redevelopment. Is, yes. that, is that right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, did anybody take you up on that? 
Um, we have one we have one person that we're actually going to be doing the facade with. We've been working with an outside agency, a consultant. Um, I'm not very happy with them. <laughs> I'll say that. Um, and so we are going to go ahead and do this facade. Um, but after that, um, we're no longer going to work with them. So I want to go back and kind of, because I want it to be open up to the community because I've got a lot of interest from other people throughout the community. Sure. So I want to be able to open it up, go back to the drawing board and redo it so that other people out beyond, beyond Washington will be able to have an opportunity to be able to be a part of that. Okay. I, did not, I did not approve the facade program for this program year for that reason. Okay. Because in-house, we'll need somebody else to be able to do all the engineering, getting all the different things that we need in order to accommodate the businesses as they come in and need help. Because we, although they're coming to us for help, we want to be able to set standards so how things look, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. to try to give it a cohesive, nice Absolutely. Look, so. Okay. That's helpful. Thanks so much. Okay. Further questions? Mr. Chairman, if you'd open up the public hearing for the public and call at least three times for the public to who have comments on this. Does anybody from the public have any comments regarding the presentation that was just given? Okay, that was the first call. Second call, anybody from the audience? Okay, one more time. Um, any comments from the audience regarding the presentation that was just given? And there, with there be no more comments, um, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion. By Alderman Turner. Second. Seconded by Alderman Hayes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Okay, that concludes our public hearing. Uh, right now we're going to have uh, audience time. Is there anybody from the audience that would like to speak about anything that is on the uh, agenda for the Community Development Committee meeting? Go ahead. Yes, please. All right. Hi, I'm Lori Suddick. I am president of College of Lake County and I'm here representing the items on the agenda for the Urban Farm Center. So just appreciate an opportunity to make a few quick summary points uh, beyond those we shared at the planning and zoning meeting last month. Um, CLC's Urban Farm Center builds on and aligns with the investments already made at our Lakeshore campus as part of our strategic priorities and master plan. The center is an extension of the college's existing economic and workforce development efforts and ecosystem network creating additional momentum for Northeast Lake County. The programming we would open is not currently represented on the Lakeshore campus. The center is intentionally designed in response to philanthropic and community requests that led to a broad stakeholder input for over two years of time to refine uh, the critical parts that are designed within it. The center does intentionally We've placed it at the Lakeshore campus uh, in order to advance the program expansion plan and diversifying the type and number of programs aligned to our local needs. Uh, according to the Greater Chicagoland Economic Partnership, which the Lake County Partners, our local economic development group, uh, is a part of, notes that food innovation and life sciences are areas of future business development for our region. Uh, the center at Lakeshore also leverages existing property and operational infrastructure for the college. It ensures mm -hmm. contiguous access to the current academic and holistic student support services we offer, and it builds synergy across our existing facilities at the campus location. Um, I also just want to offer, as described in a broad body of literature, such as an article I believe that was shared with you today um, from the Urban Institute uh, and the book, uh, America's Hidden Economic Engines, How Community Colleges Can Drive Shared Prosperity, a study by the Harvard Business School. 
The open access mission of community colleges provides social and economic mobility opportunities for people through educational attainment. However, community colleges are also assets in communities as they sit at the nexus within the ecosystem of economic and workforce development as they bridge with P20 educational pathways, businesses, and community agencies. There are many examples of community colleges across this nation being leveraged in inclusive urban economic revitalization and growth efforts. We believe CLC's Urban Farm Center project emulates the opportunities that are in those articles and resources and the potent has potential for great outcomes represented throughout the robust body of literature. I do have some letters of support I would like to provide to the committee from Adam Carson and Nydia Gonzalez, owners of Drip and Culture, Josh Beadle from Three Brothers Theater, Carla Aldana from Faith and Place, and Maggie Morales from the Lake County Community Foundation. Thank you very much. I don't know who Thank you. Perfect time for these two. <laughs> Okay, anyone else for audience time? Good evening. Good evening. I'm Eleanor Murky. I'm the former dean of the Lakeshore campus here in Waukegan. And I have been a part of this community since 1966 and served at the College of Lake County for uh, 33 years. And the college has been an excellent partner in Waukegan's development and I think our urban farm uh, development would add much to the community, not only uh, in the aesthetics uh, there, but for the students that we have in this uh, North Shore, uh, the eastern part of the county. And what it brings, the opportunities for personal uh, economic development for those who participate, it brings in uh, services that will serve, as most of you know, we are basically on the side of the uh, city and county, a food desert. Uh, people have an opportunity to really learn and benefit from this service. So I ask you, as a citizen and of this community, to support uh, the College of Lake County's um, very interest in the questions that they're um, asking or the request that they're making of you. It's extremely important, I believe, to the development of the community and the service of the citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Would there be any further comments from the audience? Hello. <clears throat> Hello. Do you need me to speak my name or swear in? It'd, it'd be nice if you could introduce yes. yourself, yes. Uh, my name is Ramses. I am from Ballet Folklorico Tayawa. We're a nonprofit based right here in downtown Genesee. Um, I'm here today in support of CLC's Urban, Par Urban Farm Development Plan. As downtown residents and small business owners, we were excited to hear of CLC's multi-million dollar education and real estate investment plan building a state-of-the-art sustainable facility in a historically disadvantaged area at no cost to the city or its residents sounds like exactly what the downtown area needs. We were surprised to hear that CLC's proposal was facing serious opposition from Waukegan officials due to a minimum height requirement mandated by a 20-year-old master plan. When considering whether or not to approve these plans, city officials must acknowledge that the outside investment that the master plan hinged upon has never come to fruition. City officials must also acknowledge that in today's economic environment, it isn't likely to come anytime soon. Here we have a private institution using private donor money and foundation money to, bring the cru to, to begin the crucial bedrock process of creating outside investment confidence, simply put, CLC's urban farm project is the single best shot we have at attracting major investment in Waukegan's downtown. Crucially, the facility will begin to address the economic and educational disparity between Waukegan and the neighboring uh, more wealthy sister cities. As for Waukegan residents, this plan will increase local property values, foot traffic, and more importantly, the morale of downtown small business owners. 
The overwhelming majority of residents and business leaders support this proposal, and we hope that you vote in the best interest of your constituents. Um, I just want to say very briefly, um, this project is immensely popular between Waukegan residents. Um, everyone that I spoke to regarding this um, can't see a downside, can only see an upside, and the fact that this is being held up over, you know, uh, basically a bureaucratic mandate from a 20-year-old master plan is, to me, is, is frankly just unimaginable. Um, here we have someone who's dying. They're willing to go basically to City Hall to basically give us money uh, to, for us to start catching up economically and educationally with our neighboring cities. And for us to turn that down on a 20-year-old plan and what it requires from prospective uh, investment, to me, makes absolutely no sense. So I really do hope you guys vote in the best interest of uh, Waukegan and Waukegan residents. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the audience would like to speak regarding anything on the agenda for this committee meeting? Okay, thank you very much. Um, there being no further comments, let's move on to old business. Um, there being no old business, we're gonna move on to new business. And uh, we're gonna do um, item A. <clears throat> item A and item B are, I believe, related. Um, so we'll do item A first, ordinance approving zoning calendar number 2701, a map amendment rezoning for 3391 West Beach Road from R1 single residence to CR, which is a conservative recreational and agriculture. May I have a motion, please? A motion. I'll Second. A motion. Oh, motion by Alderman Turner, seconded by Alderman Florian. Just noting that's conservation. Florian. Just noting that's conservation. I'm sorry. Recreational and agriculture. Conservation, recreation, and agriculture. Right. Okay. I, you said conservative. Oh. Okay, thank you. Um, may I have a roll call, please? Um, are we not going to discuss Oh, this? questions. <laughs> um, I know that in the past, um, and maybe you can explain this, Noel, why single family residents allowed golf courses as part of the, because um, I know we had the same problem out at Midlane where I live. Our golf course was zoned residential and then yeah. they actually built houses on it <laughs> right I, I believe that the golf courses in both cases predated the zoning to residential so i think that those were grandfathered uses so why weren't they made res re recreational i not tell you that i wasn't in the department or the director at that time so i can't speak mm -hmm. to why it wasn't done but we're trying to fix it now in partnership with the park district um, and they've agreed that they will pursue um, with this post this map amendment and with the text amendment if it gets approved that they would then pursue getting all of their properties into compliance and rezoning them to CR. So they'll either do that apply independently or we'll do that through our UDO process when we then subsequently adopt a new zoning map. So is Bonnybrook residential? Off the top of my head I believe Bonnybrook is currently zoned CR. Oh okay. Okay, that was my major question. Okay, any other questions? <clears throat> Roll call, please. Alderman Florian? Aye. Alderman Hayes? Aye. Alderman Turner? Aye. Chairman Rivera? Aye. Thank you. Um, item B, <clears throat> ordinance approving zoning calendar number 2702, a text amendment to section 7.2-3, of the Waukegan Zoning Ordinance allowing park district owned and operated recreational facilities as a conditional use in the CR Conservation Recreation Agriculture District. Any Thank questions? Um, motion? I'll make the motion. I'll second. Okay. <laughs> so question. again, so we we have, do we have currently other places where it's zoned CR that the park district has facilities? So Bonnybrook would be an example of a facility that's more intensive than what CR currently allows. Because um, of the banquet. Right. And, okay, so um, this is gonna be part of the cleanup process as well. Correct, so a, a private, 
business entity wanting to do this kind of thing would be an amusement operation, um, you know, depending on the specifics of it, in the B3 district. So we talked about B3 for certain properties versus CR and came to agreement that this was the cleanest way um, to amend the language so that it's limited to the park district but allows all of their properties to become compliant. So it will be limited to the park district? Yes. Okay, because I specifies. don't want this to end up creating a problem out at mid lane. So, Correct. Okay. So what's, right. what's the park district going to do with it? What are they going to put out there? Um, so there is a, another zoning calendar that's still in the Planning and Zoning Commission, zoning calendar number 2703, and that's a conditional use permit for a golf facility no, uh, driving right. range. So no. that's still in the process. Um, but these two got approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission, so they were able to advance ahead of the other. And I'm John Beckman. I'm the Director of Finance and Operations here. I've also got Mike Jesse as well. So if you have any questions, happy to answer them. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any questions? I have a first and a second. Roll call, please. Alderman Florian? Aye. Alderman Hayes? Aye. Alderman Turner? Aye. Chairman Rivera? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, item uh, C and D, these two are also related. Excuse me, um, an ordinance approving zoning calendar number 2704, a conditional use permit for inline retail with a drive through at Zero Fountain Square Place, pin number 07 25 310 018, in the B2 Community Shopping District and Western Gateway Redevelopment Overlay District. May I have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Any questions to the motion? What is inline retail? What does that mean? It's like a strip, strip mall. mall. Thank you. Doesn't mean you have to roller skate. <laughs> this particular uh, facility is a three unit facility. They have tenants already prepared for the two end units, mm. two restaurant tenants, and then the middle unit would be occupied by another tenant. Okay, great. Um, may I have a roll call please? Alderman Florian? Aye. Alderman Hayes? Aye. Alderman Turner? Aye. Chairman Rivera? Aye. Thank you. Um, item D, ordinance approving zoning calendar number 2705, site plan approval for a shopping center in the B2 Community Shopping District and Western Gateway Redevelopment Overlay District. May I have a motion and a second? So moved. Seconded. Any questions to this motion? Yeah, where is this one at? This is the same facility. There are two approvals required. The drive-through in the Fountain Square area requires a conditional use permit, and any development in Fountain Square requires a site plan approval. So same project, same location. Thank you, ma'am. Two approvals. You're welcome, okay. sir. Okay. Roll call, please. Alderman Florian? Aye. Alderman Hayes? Aye. Alderman Turner? Aye. Chairman Rivera? Aye. Thank you. Um, item E, ordinance approving an amendment to ordinance 0 no, 08 0 05, which amended ordinance 05 0 113, regarding the Waukegan Lakefront Downtown Overlay District mm -hmm. for zoning calendar number 2706 and 2708, to allow for a variance request for the height and setback restrictions for College of Lake County for the site at 100 West Madison Street for the CLC Urban Farm Center. May I have a first and a second, please? Motion. Second. Any questions to this motion? Got a comment. Be ready for that. Thank you. So <clears throat> there's been some uh, discussion around this particular motion. Uh, as it relates to the comprehensive plan in the overlay district. Uh, my thought on it is we make plans for a reason. And I am often one who says, hey, we don't want to go against the plan. However, as the gentleman pointed out, um, and I think we all are aware, 
development downtown is stagnated and we seem to be on the go. And, and, and I gotta tell you, I'm not real enthusiastic about another government entity taking property off of the tax rolls. But on the other hand, you know, we have to, we, we've got to make motion and we're starting to, to develop downtown where there's a lot of interest. I looked at some of the renderings for this facility. I've talked with Dr. Sudik and, and Eliza and, and the Dean. Um, I, I, I support this project. And I, I know that that may not be, uh, that there may be some who are not in agreement with me and don't appreciate my rationale or don't you know, jive with my rationale for this, but I think it's, it's a, a good move uh, and I think it's something that we should welcome. And I'm gonna vote yes on this variance request. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, any other questions or comments? Um, I, I just want to point out this property is already off the tax rolls, correct, Noel? The city, CLC already owns this property. That's correct. CLC okay. does already own it. And we, we originally owned it and we sold, sold it to them. So it's already gave it to them. Yes. We gave it. Okay. okay. After we spent. Not even for a dollar. No, not even for a dollar. <laughs> okay. um, You're making out pretty good. Right. But so it's already been off the tax rolls for several years because probably since the new sun left. Isn't this the old new sun site? It is the former new sun site. It was transferred um, as part of a a negotiation for the building that has recently opened that moved to the site across the street. It was originally proposed on the north side as a two story building, which the city opposed mm -hmm. because Sheridan Road requires a minimum of a six story building. Right. So um, through that negotiation, it was built on the southern property, which CLC had acquired from the prior owner. The city never owned that site. Um, and the recapture provision in the agreement had lapsed during the time that that was transpiring over the course of years before that got resolved. So we lost our ability to get the, the city lost its ability to get the property back. Well, I, I know we had a long conversation, somewhat, somewhat long conversation about this on Thursday. Um, and I totally understand the um, position of, of the city in, in general um, about the plan. And I hear people talk about the fact that it's 20 years old, but it's been updated. It's not that it's just been sitting there for 20 years doing nothing. And I'm on record, Noel and I talked about this as one of the people who complains about we never stick to our plan. We don't, we put them on a shelf and then nothing happens. I've said that. I, I have to say I have a different feeling about that now than I did before. Um, as, you, as you sit up here longer and longer, you learn more and more. And so um, I, I, am, I, I always have strong opinions, but I, I like to think of myself as someone who will learn along the way. So um, while I understand the plan, why, why I understand why it was originally written the way it was, the one thing that sticks out to me is the fact we, we hadn't had a pandemic when this plan was written. Um, and that has changed so much. I mean, here I am, you know, with my mask still on, right? Um, and I've done a lot of reading uh, specifically about office buildings, return to work, you know, what, what does our future even look like? I don't think we even really know at this point, to be honest, and not that we ever know, but um, I, I, I understand the idea of having a skyline along Sheridan Road, I get that, I, I totally, and I'm so glad you stuck to your guns because that building you guys built is amazing, and I think it's way more amazing than a two-story building would have been, so. I have to say I'm on her side about, about the current building. Um, but I, I, you know, we, we had to analyze the wraparound center a few weeks ago. We, him and I were just talking about this and we, we voted no uh, uh, for the wraparound center for certain reasons. And I really don't feel that wraparound center is gonna draw people to want to open a business in Waukegan or move to downtown Waukegan but I feel differently about this project. I just, from the minute I saw it, I felt different. And I realize there's been problems about how it was planned and how it was presented, and I, and I can't ignore that. But I, ha I have to say, 
I don't say, say this too often, but I, ha I have to agree with Alderman Turner that I, I support this. I know, right? <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Florian. Um, Alderman Pace? You guys got uh, any more projects? Because. <laughs> wow. yeah, you better strike that iron top. <laughs> uh, I have some questions that maybe you guys can answer. Uh, were any other sites considered aside from the, the parcel that we're discussing here tonight when evaluating the urban farm? Yeah. Um, well, the college, as I mentioned in my comments, the college has its own property that we want to leverage. So. Uh, we're not looking to purchase or acquire new sites. Um, we could consider putting this at the Grays Lake campus, but we already have a horticulture center there and we have our South Lake campus, uh, which there's a property there, but this is an urban center revitalization. And so this project fits our Lakeshore campus. Uh, I will offer to some of the earlier comments, which wasn't necessarily your question, but I'll take the opportunity to say, that um, the college did invest about a half a million or five hundred thousand uh, dollars to improve the property once it acquired it from the city. So that that acquisition of property didn't come without cost to the college. Uh, and uh, when the master plan was put in place, uh, I did review it. Uh, it. There really isn't language in there about the college, even though the college has existed in this in the city of Waukegan for fifty two years. And um, I was here in 2020 when it was refreshed and I wasn't a part of that dialogue. So it is why my comments about this is an asset, the fact that the city of Waukegan has a community college right in the middle of its downtown. We're not fully leveraging the opportunities that come for that. So to the question of where else should it go, it should go right where all of our existing assets are that we can leverage and synergize with the use of this um, center uh, and to put it elsewhere uh, would require the college to add operational infrastructure and cost and we're trying to be good stewards of our taxpayer dollar we're not trying to build more than we need and we're not trying to expand uh, how much investment we have to make to run and operate it hopefully that answers your question yeah that's that certainly helps I appreciate that yeah um, why can't there be, maybe it's not six, but why can't there be a higher, why isn't there a greater effort being made to meet the minimum height restrictions? We are building what we need. And so this, the Urban Farm Center has specific components to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is very feasible from a sustainable design to do it on a single level. Mm. Okay. And I think, the general direction that I'm, I'm trending toward is mm -hmm. the, the College of Lake County wants to leverage its assets and you want to build what you need, but as aldermen for the city, mm -hmm. we have to think about you know, fully, fully leveraging our assets. The master plan is in fact an asset, whether it has come to fruition or not, and we are responsible for executing on a vision um, that was not only expensive to, to at 20 years mm -hmm. ago because we hired outside consultants yeah. to do that and yeah. allowed everybody to weigh in sure. um, but to to do our best to see it through mm -hmm. certainly the economic climate has changed no one can dispute that it just seems to me that uh, it is the most terrific concept you can't dispute that uh, it just seems like the location is not ideal and that's that's what I, what I'm what I'm thinking about. So while you guys are balancing what your needs are as mm -hmm. members of the city council, we have to balance what the city's needs are. Sure. So in, in my mind, I would love to either hear or see some effort being made toward either meeting the, the minimum height restrictions or coming somewhat close. It kind of seems like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it kind of seems like it's all or nothing. And it's like, this is what we want, we're the community, Mm. We're CLC, and this is no doubt a great, a great concept. But um, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of effort being made to try to meet the city's plan and vision for what we see downtown. Yeah, and if I may just offer, I mean, for, I mean, certainly this has been an ongoing conversation. Um, but I mean, we've been working on this project since 2019. 
So there's been a lot of dialogue around it, um, but we just implemented a multi-story building and made other investments on the campus to be able to renovate spaces for delivery. If we were to build more levels, I have no programmed design plan for what to do in that space. And sure. so um, if, it, if it's not purposeful space, I, it is difficult for me to justify to my own board uh, building more floors than we need when I don't have programming in order or demand for that added space to deliver. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. I understand. And, and I'll, I mean, the college, I'm not sure where in the master planning process it was missed, but a di I feel a dialogue should have occurred at that time in consideration of the fact that a college is sitting right in the center. That property is a part of the college's property. So I'm, I'm not, I don't know where the conversations were that that was going to have to be a, a six story location. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, but I understand. Okay. I, I mean, I, I, I do. And I appreciate your comments yeah. and the feedback and the rollout and the way you guys have done mm -hmm. a good job of trying to Thank educate you. everybody. Yeah. It's, it's, it's well done. The renderings are beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. I think you kind of see where I land on mm -hmm. this spectrum. Sure. Um, and whatever the outcome is, I'll certainly work with you guys. But yeah. I just think that maybe we have plenty of other spots in the city that could benefit from an urban farm. Mm -hmm. And there's land available or buildings that should be torn down that I'm sure deals could be worked out to make it beneficial to mm -hmm. the city. Uh, I don't wanna speak for the city, but it seems yeah. to me that there could be something worked out. So um, yeah, that's all yeah. I have right now. I mean, I appreciate that. Not <clears throat> If it were at another location, that's adding operational costs to the college, and that is part of the concern. Yep, I get yeah. it. Okay, thank, thank you. you so much. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, go ahead. So, I was just gonna follow up. I'm sorry, Dominic DeMonica with DeMonica Kemper Architects. So to your question about um, whether or not there was an effort to try to increase the, um, the height of the building. So if you look at the renderings, um, it is a one-story building in terms of floor plate, but the front edge of that building, um, that was very intentional to try to lift that building up as high as we could. So we're um, about 36, 35 and a half feet, I believe, from the, the um, sidewalk level up to the upper level. So residential, 12 feet floor to floor, it's about as high as a three-story residential type building if you put it in that perspective. So that was really part of the goal of, in terms of trying to get that, that lift and try to get as close as we can uh, in terms of trying to create some height. Okay, that's helpful. Thank okay. you very much, appreciate it. All right, any other questions? Yes, other than both. Yes, to the staff of CLC. You had mentioned that this project has different components. Can you reiterate what those components are? Um, I'll, I'll take a quick stab and Eliza can um, jump in. Oops, sorry. I lost a folder. Yeah, I, I have my list and I'm not finding it, so you can go ahead. Thank you for the question, Alderman Simsbolt. Can you hear me? Is this, let me build a little Okay, so the several locations are built for um, the educational aspects of it and also for the entrepreneurial aspects of it and also for the public um, use of the space. So one component would be a public retail market featuring locally grown year-round produce. Um, that would be open to the public with the regular business hours. Um, second, lo second component would be a commercial kitchen for food entrepreneurs who have taken their home-based business to um, more brick and mortar with more food safety aspects in mind, licensing available to them. Uh, another uh, aspect would be the indoor year-round um, controlled environment agriculture space. That would be more of the production aspect, so for growing greens, fruiting crops like cucumbers, tomatoes, uh, peppers all year round, um, herbs, lettuces, things like that, also mushrooms, microgreens, um, all in a downtown location. There would also be a food processing area 
for, um, and when I say processing, some people take that to the next level, but it's just washing the produce and packaging in it for um, movement to um, uh, its end use, whether that's in the retail space or to another um, local business. Oh, classrooms also, also classroom. Thank you, excellent. Yep. Oh, so, and a loading dock. <laughs> yes. So I guess I'm not making um, this a redundant question, but Noel, excuse me if, if I could address you. What are the barriers again, not for us as a city? Sure, so um, the master plan, which was confirmed by the comprehensive land use plan uh, that was adopted in 2020, requires a minimum of six stories on Sheridan Road. That's with a variance, so it's eight to 12 stories with a variance of 25%, which would allow it to be as short as six stories under the current master plan design guidelines and overlay district ordinance. So I'm sorry, what was the last thing you said? Overlay district ordinance that's specific to the downtown and lakefront redevelopment area. So um, this particular agenda item is amending the overlay district ordinance to create a new variance that would allow CLC to apply for the building height amendment. And it would also allow setbacks. The, the current rules require buildings to be built to the lot line. And so this would allow them to have setbacks on each side of the building so that it, it isn't built right to the property lines. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. One, uh, one final question, if I may. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, what, how are you going to handle parking and cottage deliver pickups and deliveries from the uh, from the facility? Where's the park? Where are you guys going to park? And how are you going to get product delivered and or supplies delivered and product taken away? So the floor paint currently calls for a, a loading dock, so when deliveries to and from the space, um, and there's been parking studies that were presented to the Planning and Zoning Commission that shows the turning radius for 25-foot trucks, garbage trucks, things like that coming and going. There's also a screen that's indicated on the plan so that um, loading dock and garbage waste will be screened from all views on Madison and on the alley. Um, and then in terms of most of the um, traffic to and from foot, would be foot traffic from either our CLC garage um, or uh, the students that are already taking, um, taking advantage of whatever is happening at campus or individuals that are um, in downtown already. So what if I'm sitting at home and I say, oh, geez, I wanna go down to the store and get some mm -hmm. fruit, veggies, where am I gonna park? Currently there's four temporary spots that are um, legal parking spots uh, right outside of um, the camp, the student services building yes, yes. on the south side of Madison. So that could be a quick pickup spot too. Okay, cool, thanks. Can I ask a, a follow up on sure. the parking? Um, so I, I've heard from uh, a couple people that reached out, similar sentiment, great concept, maybe not best location, but parking was the number one issue that was raised. And uh, parking was uh, one of the big issues that came up and seemed to be a real point of contention during the wraparound center debate. Mm -hmm. So uh, with four temporary spots and then there's the CLC garage, mm -hmm. but um, how, how, do you, how do you anticipate, how are you gonna handle the flow of traffic? I, I have to believe the idea here is to attract more people to downtown. Mm -hmm. So it's not just gonna be just students that are there or people who are already downtown. So if people are coming to downtown for this specific use, where, do you expect that they would park and how many parking spots are on average available? Sure, so we're currently in the midst of a parking, doing a parking, oh, do you wanna yeah. take this one? Yes. Hi, I'm Sue Kilby, I'm the Director of Capital for the college. Um, we have 365 parking spaces currently that are not fully um, used. Um, we have a lot of sc um, students that um, were coming in the evening, some that come on weekends, some that come in the morning, so they're not always using it. Uh, we recently had a, an event for the Eleanor Murphy dedication, and it wasn't completely filled, and we had thousands of, hundreds of thousands of people here, thousands of people here. Um, so um, we're working with planning and zoning with Noel's team right now to determine the calculation, and if we have to apply for a variance, we'll do that. But um, we, we were very confident that we'll have enough spaces. I'll offer, since we opened the Eleanor Murphy Community Center, we have hosted 44 events there. 
Uh, the room's capacity is about 170. We haven't yet filled our garage, um, and that is with classes running during the semester. So we're, we're confident that we, we have adequate parking. Okay, what's the cost to park, if you don't mind my asking? Zero dollars. Okay. We do not charge our students nor those coming to events for parking. Okay, and right. for those that would be coming to this, to the Correct. urban farm? Yeah, the, the urban zero. farm is part of the college campus. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, thank Great. you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, okay, do I have a first and a second? Yes, you have a motion, <coughs> excuse me, motion by Alderman Turner and a second by Alderman Florian. All right, um, may I have a roll call, please? Alderman Florian? Aye. Alderman Hayes? No. Alderman Turner? Aye. Chairman Rivera. Aye. Thank you. Um, uh, the next two items are also associated with uh, item E. Um, so item F, ordinance approving variances to the height and setback restrictions in the Waukegan Lakefront Downtown Overlay District for zoning calendar number 2707 and 2709 to allow for a single story building with a height of 38 feet and setbacks on each side of the building not to exceed 22 feet for College of Lake County for the site at 100 West Madison Street for the CLC Urban Farm Center. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Seconded. Motion by Alderman Florian, seconded by Alderman Hayes. Any questions to this motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Florian? Aye. Alderman Hayes? No. Alderman Turner? Aye. Chairman Rivera? Aye. Thank you. Um, next item, item G, ordinance approving zoning calendar number 2710, a conditional use permit for an educational institution at 100 West Madison Street in the B4 Central Business District and the Downtown Lakefront Overlay District. So moved. Seconded. Motion by Alderman Florian, seconded by Alderman Hayes. Roll call, please. Alderman Florian? Aye. Alderman Hayes? Um, no. Alderman Turner? Aye. Chairman Rivera? Aye, thank you. Um, item H, ordinance creating a Class C retail package sales liquor license for a WAD Squad Incorporated, also known as Hotspot, Food and Liquor located at 2435 Washington Street. And I believe this is a um, change of ownership. Yes. Hello, I'm Dale Watt, presenting of Hotspot Food and Liquor. Mm -hmm. I'm changing ownership from my brother Fade Al Watt to myself, I, Dale Watt. So for a Class C license, Food and Liquor license. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you very much. You're welcome. Um, are there any questions? Or wait, I need a motion first. Motion. Motion by Alderman Turner. Second. Seconded by Alderman Hayes. Any questions to the motion? I have a yes, question. I have a question. Oh. Yes. Clarification. Is this just wine and beer? Uh, liquor and beer. I'm sorry. Liquor. Everything. And wine and beer. And just groceries. Wine and, beer. and groceries. And, and snacks. Groceries. It's a retail store. Okay, Alderman Hayes. Uh, yeah, the, is there a license in place right now? Or is this? Yes. yes, it is. Okay, so what's the license that's in place now? Class C. It's the same thing? Okay. Yes, it is. Because right. it says creation of a Class C retail package. Yes. So I just want to make sure that it's, you're just changing owners. Just changing owners. Everything sure. else is the same, okay. Yes, it is. Right. Okay, any, if there be no further questions, may I have a roll, a roll call, please? Alderman Florian? Aye. Alderman Hayes? Aye. Alderman Turner? Aye. Chairman Rivera? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay, moving on to... Uh. Item I. Ordinance creating a Class J hotel liquor license for um, uh, RATE, R-E-I-T, 4101 LLC, also known as Waukegan Spring Hill Suites by Marriott located at 4101 Fountain Square Place. May I have a motion? A uh, motion by Alderman Hayes. Second. Second. By Alderman Turner. Any questions to this motion? 
Roll call, please. Alderman Florian? Aye. Alderman Hayes? Aye. Alderman Turner? Aye. Chairman Rivera? Aye. Thank you. Um, item J, ordinance creating a Class E restaurant liquor license for Chicago Incorporated located at 2663 Grand Avenue. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Uh, motion by Alderman Hayes. Second. Seconded by Alderman Turner. Any questions to this motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Florian? Aye. Alderman Hayes? Aye. Alderman Turner? Aye. Chairman Rivera? Aye. Thank you. Um, uh, that concludes the new business. Um, uh, number six, reports and communication. There being none, um, I will move on to item number seven, adjournment. May I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. So moved. Uh, second. Motion by Alderman Florian, seconded by Alderman Turner. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. The meeting has ended at 6.05.